Okay, so today we're talking about balancing redox solution, uh, balancing redox reactions in a base solution, which only differs from balancing in an acid by a very small margin. Okay, so <clears throat> when we were doing the reactions in acid solution, we had water and H plus at our disposal. We can grab as many from the solvent and put them into our reaction, just as much that we need. And now we're going to do the same theory, except now we've got as much water and hydroxide ion as we want. Now here's the, the difference. Here's the part where it's different. To make the balancing process simpler, just for us as Gen Chem students, we're going to use the acid procedure that we learned last time, and then we're just going to make a little modification to it. Okay, so we're going to treat it like it's occurring in acidic solution, just like we learned last time. And then we're going to make one little modification to that procedure. Okay, so in other words, we're going to treat it like it's an acid up until we get to a certain point, and then we're going to say, but really it's occurring in a base, and here's the modification we have to make. Okay, so it's just a slight little twist on the procedure that we learned for balancing in acidic solution. <clears throat> now, the one little word to the wise I want to throw out there for everyone is that there are a lot of little details. Just like when we were balancing in acid solution, there are a lot of little details there, right? We're gonna have a lot of little details here too. So they're not challenging in terms of more difficult, but you just need to pay really close attention. And okay? when you're multiplying through by a coefficient, make sure you multiply everybody by that coefficient. When you're adding, make sure you cross out things that cancel on both sides. And if one's bigger than the other, right, you subtract the smaller one from the larger one. There are just lots of little details. So don't get in a rush, don't get in a hurry. Pay close attention to what you're doing and you'll be fine. All right, so when we balance redox and base, step one and step two are no different, right? And by the way, these notes are already posted online, so if you don't want to write all this down, it's already posted online. You're going to still determine what's oxidized and reduced. Again, if, if doing that part right there is not something you remember from Chem 1, it's time to go back and watch those videos and read your notes from Chem 1, okay? because we're not spending class time on how do you figure out oxidation numbers? So if that's part that's giving you grief, make sure you go back and review your Chem 1 stuff. Then we're going to write half reactions just like we did for acids. We're still treating it like it's an acid, right? So we're going to balance our number of atoms and the number of electrons based on what's oxidized and what's reduced, right? We multiply by coefficient, etc. We're going to balance everything other than hydrogen and oxygen first. We save hydrogen and oxygen for last. And just like we did when we were treating it as if it were an acid, we balance any oxygens using H2O since that's our solvent. We balance H by adding H plus. <clears throat> and again, we're only going to deal with these two steps if oxygen or hydrogen are part of our equation. But now here's where it gets different. Okay? So far, this is what we did when we treated it in acid solution, right? That's what we talked about last time. But now, it's really not happening in an acid solution, it's happening in a base, okay? This isn't happening in an acid solution, it's happening in a base. So we need to take this and turn it into the base equivalent, okay? So we say to ourselves, well, it's really not happening in acid, it's happening in base. So we need to offset that H plus by adding OH minus to counterbalance it, okay? Because it's really not happening in H plus solution, it's happening in hydroxide. And whatever amount you add to one side, you need to add that same amount to the other side. Okay, so for instance, if I have three H pluses on one side, because that's how many H pluses I needed to offset the H and H2O, let's pretend to have three H pluses on the reactant side. I would, re I would add three H pluses to the reactants, and, excuse me, I would add three hydroxides to the reactants, and three hydroxides to the products. Okay, got to do the same thing to both sides. And now, any OH minus and H plus that are on the same side, smash those together and that'll give you water, okay? So if I had three H pluses on the reactant side, I say, well, I really need to offset that. So I'll offset that with three OH minuses. Three OH minus plus three H plus, that gives me water, okay? So, You'll see this when we work through several examples. I know it looks like a lot of writing right now. These are really the only two new steps. If you can deal with these two steps right here being new, the rest of it's identical to how we did it in an acid solution. Because then, 
You'll multiply any coefficients you need so that your electrons cancel out, and you'll add up your half reactions and double check, right? That's all, that's, that's the only new part is this right here. We'll offset our H plus using hydroxide. And just a reminder that the amount of hydroxide you add to the products, you'd have to add to the reactants. And then anytime you have H and OH together, make that into water. Okay, that's the only new part. So if you understood how to do it in acidic solution, then you should understand how to do it in basic solution. You're just making this one little tweak. Alrighty, so let's do this one together. This is occurring in basic solution. All right, so we've got the net ionic equation here. So the first thing we need to do is what? We gotta give everybody oxidation numbers, right? Monatomic ion, plus seven, minus two, zero, so that's pure elements, most stable form. And, actually that'd be I2S, but that's okay. And, uh, plus four minus two. Now if this part is, you're going, I don't know how she got those numbers, it's time to go back and review Chem 1 stuff, okay? So manganese got reduced and iodine was oxidized. Do we agree on the oxidation numbers? All right, so let's do our half reactions. So first of all, we said, okay, Iodine went from minus one to zero, right? That's a, get, that's a loss of one electron, but is this balanced? Without a two here, it's not balanced, right? Because it was written like this. The problem was written as I minus, right? Going to I two. But that's not balanced in terms of number of atoms. So if one iodine loses one electron, when I balance it for number of atoms to make law of conservation of mass satisfied, two iodines would lose two electrons. Just like we did last time when we were balancing an acid solution. Does everyone see why this is two E minus and not one? Is everybody with me here on why this is a two and not a one? Yes, 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 we're good. All right, now let's look at the reduction. Manganese is going from plus seven to plus four, right? That's a gain of three electrons. So we don't need any coefficients to balance the number of manganese, but we do need to do something to balance the oxygens. What do I do to balance oxygen? What do I do to balance oxygen? H2O, on what side? on the product side, right? And I don't need one H2O, I need two of them, right? Because there are four oxygens on this side, there are two oxygens on this side, so I need two H2O. But I've created another problem, problem being where's this H coming from? So how do I balance the hydrogen? How much H plus, right? Four, right, two times two. So that would be 4H+. plus. Now, if we were doing this in acidic solution, we'd be done. We'd say, all right, let's go on to the next step and add them together. But is this occurring in an acidic solution? We're pretending like it is up to this point, but now we need to say to ourselves, well, it's really not happening in acid. It's actually happening in base. So that means that any H plus that I have, I need to add an equivalent amount of hydroxide to offset it. Okay, so how many OH minuses am I gonna add? I'd be adding four. Do I add four to just the reactant side? No, I gotta add it to both the reactant side and the product side. So if this is what I had, now I need to add four OH minus to the reactant side and four OH minus to the product side. Okay, because we're, we pretended like it was an acid just to get to this point, but now we need to say to ourselves, well, it's really not acid, it's actually base. So I add enough hydroxide to offset any of that acid that I used um, to help me in terms of making this easier. All right? Now, this 4OH minus and this 4H plus, what do they combine together to make? That'll make water, right? 
So those two make water, and then everything else is staying the same. And now, here's another thing that we're gonna do when we add these up. When we add these up, what else can we do? We've got two H2Os here, and four H2Os here, right? So can I simplify that further? Yes, I can. So when I combine my half reactions, things like this are gonna get simplified, okay? So when I combine my half reactions, this coefficient is two, this coefficient is three, three is not a multiple of two, all right? So I'm gonna turn them both into six. So I multiply the top one through by three, the bottom one through by two, all right? And I add them up. And again, this is when I simplify things like this, and obviously the electrons cancel out here as well. And if there was any other cleaning up that I could do, I would do it at this step as well, okay? So there's my final answer. 4H2O, 2MnO4 minus, 6I minus produces 2MnO2, 8OH minus 3I2. Now again, like I said last time, the order doesn't matter. So if you put this and place of this, right, if you swap those two, the order isn't going to make a difference. So long as your coefficients are the correct coefficients and you've got the correct things on the right side of the equation, right? That's the only thing that matters. One plus three versus three plus one, that makes no difference. So this is why I say watch the little tiny details. Watch them carefully. Right? Because stuff like this, cleaning up, makes a difference. Crossing out spectators makes a difference. And so, especially when you're doing your online homework, it's going to get really picky about that kind of stuff. So make sure that you're cleaning up as you go. How do we feel about this? It's just like doing it in acid, just one step further. All right, so you try this one. I'll give you extra time since it takes a little bit longer. Here's the net ionic equation. It's occurring in basic solution. So I want you to balance this. I'll stop the video while you work. So let's see what we got. First thing we need to do is go through and assign oxidation numbers to everybody. Zero plus two, zero plus one minus two. Oxidation number part's pretty easy, right? We don't have any nasty complex ions to deal with. Uh, we get oxidation of silver and reduction of zinc. So the oxidation half reaction, just like one of the ones we saw in the example, right? Silver goes from zero to plus one, but that's not factoring in how many silvers are going from zero to plus one, right? Silver number one goes from zero to plus one, and then silver number two also goes from zero to plus one. Right? So if one silver loses one electron, then two silvers would lose two electrons collectively. Do we agree on the oxidation half reaction? These little details, right? that's what gets you. It's just those little tiny details that can make things nasty. Because if you forget to make this coefficient two, that's going to change what you multiply by when you're adding them up, right? So like I said, it's not particularly hard. There's no nasty stoichiometry or anything. It's just watching those little details. All right, let's look at the oxygen component, right? Because this has got Ag2O. Well, i got to figure out where's this O coming from, right? It's coming from H2O, right? If I add a one H2O, oops, wrong direction. If I have one H2O, that gives me an O, but then I've got the problem of, well, what happens to the H's? So that's why I have two H plus. Do we agree on this step? I combine two steps in one here. We have AG going to AG2O. Okay, well, where'd the O come from? So that's why you put H2O. But then you say to yourself, okay, well, where'd this H come from? So that's why I added 2H plus. Do we agree on balancing the oxygens and hydrogens? Yes? 
All right, so breaking it up. Now let's offset the H plus and OH minus. So where's the OH minus going to go, on the reactant side or on the product side? It's going to go on both, right? And how many H, uh, OH minuses am I going to add? How do I know how many OH minuses to add? Pick a number out of the hat. That might work, but I wouldn't rely on that too heavily. How do I know how many hydroxides to add? It's based on the number of H pluses, right. And I add it to both sides, right. I add two H pluses here to offset. Whatever I add to one side, I add to the other side. And now this and this make what? What do these two things combine? Those give us H2O, right? And now am I ready to add it up with the other reaction? Yes, now I'm ready. So let's go to the other half reaction. So there's our reduction half reaction. No coefficients to deal with this time. Plus two to zero is a gain of two electrons. So that one was nice and easy. All right, so now I'm ready to add coefficient of two, coefficient of two, no multiplying. So we just add them straight up. And then we reduce any sort of um, reduction that we can do. Let's take care of that. All right, so our electrons cancel. There's one water here. There are two waters here. So let's subtract this one from this one. And we get our final answer. If you wrote yours in a different order, but you have the same coefficients, that's all that matters. So long as you have the correct things on the correct side and the correct coefficients, I don't care what order you write it. And your online homework won't care either. As long as it's, it's look, it looks for coefficients and it looks for location. How do we feel about this one? Yes, no, maybe. Ready to try another one? Okay, this one's a little bit more involved, so I'm going to give you more time on it as well. Um, nitrogen's got an oxidation number of minus three here. So I'm going to give you that piece of information. Nitrogen's acting a little differently than what we would expect it to be. So I'm just going to tell you, in both substances, nitrogen is minus three. You figure out the rest from here. All right, so I'll try to give you a nice long chunk of time to work this one out. Like I said, it's not particularly difficult in terms of math or any sort of stoichiometry. It's just little, little details that we have to watch. All right, so again, my advice to you, take your time, double check your work at every step. Make sure that you're not making silly little mistakes that could cause you to get the whole thing wrong, right? Because, I mean, if you have one coefficient wrong and then you multiply through by a factor of four, for instance, that's going to make your final answer off big time. And it could just be one little coefficient, especially if it's the electrons coefficient, right? That can make a humongous difference. So I try to give you extra time on these when we're doing them here in class. But also, translate that into your homework, too. Okay? Give yourself extra time to do these problems on your homework because you're going to need it. Okay? Give yourself the extra time just so you can watch all those little details and make sure you're not making silly little mistakes. All right, so I told you that nitrogen was minus 3 in both substances here. So that means that it's obviously not changing. Right? So carbon gets oxidized. It goes from minus 2 to plus 4. And manganese gets reduced. It goes from plus 7 to plus 4. Do we agree? I'm sorry. Carbon goes from plus 2 to plus 4. Is that what I said? I think I was looking at oxygen. Carbon goes from plus 2 to plus 4. Manganese goes from plus 7 to plus 4. Oxygen is a spectator. Right? So oxygen is not participating. Nitrogen is not participating. Do we agree on the oxidation numbers step? Okay, let's do oxidation first. 
Going from plus two to plus four is a loss of two electrons. We don't need to deal with any sort of coefficients because carbon is one, one, nitrogen is one, one, but we do have to deal with the oxygen piece. So what do we do to address oxygen? How do we balance oxygen? H2O, and what side is it going on? On the reactants, right. It goes on the reactant side. But that introduced a new problem, which is the issue of hydrogen. So how do I fix that? That's right, H plus. And how many H plus? Two. Two, right. Because I have H2O, I need two H plus. Now again, if this were occurring in acidic solution, if we were doing this in acid, we'd just stop right here and be done, right? But we're pretending like it's an acid, and then we're gonna turn it into a base. So since this is actually occurring in a basic solution, what do we need to do to modify this so that it reflects the fact that it's a base and not an acid? What modification needs to happen? OH minus, right, how much? Two, and where? Both sides, right. You have to offset that H plus by adding two hydroxides to both sides, right? If I add two hydroxides to the products, I add two hydroxides to the reactants. And how can I do this? How can I get away with this? Because OH minus is part of my solvent, right? It's occurring in a basic solution. And then what combination am I gonna make? Water, how many? How many waters am I gonna get? Two, right? Two H plus, two OH minus. Do we agree? Now if you wanted to reduce the H2Os at this step, that's fine. If you wanna wait until you add them up, that's fine too. So I went ahead and reduced them this way. But again, if you reduce it at the end, it'll work either way. So here I went ahead and reduced it. Now, I'm ready to move on, right? This is a balanced tap reaction. Do we agree? Let's look at the other half reaction then. For the reduction, manganese gained three electrons. That's the only way you can go from plus seven to plus four, is if you gain three electrons, right? Number of manganese atoms doesn't need to be balanced. But number of oxygen atoms does need to be balanced. So what do I do to balance the oxygens? H2O, how many H2Os? Two, right, because I've got four oxygens here, two oxygens here, so to get two more oxygens, I would need two H2Os on the product side, right? So that gives me this. But I've created a new problem. What problem did that create? I've got a problem with hydrogen, right? So how many H pluses do I add and where? Four H pluses to the reactant side, right? Now again, if this were occurring in acidic solution, we'd stop right here and we'd be done, right? But this is not actually occurring in acid. We're treating it like it's acid just to make it easier on ourselves. Now we need to say, well, it's really not acidic, it's a basic solution. So let's turn it into a basic solution. So what do I need to do to turn this into a basic solution, which is what it really is? What modification or addition do I need to make? OH minus, OH minus. good, how much? Four. four, because I have a coefficient of four here, right? I've got four H plus, so I need four OH minus. And where does it go? Reactant side, product side, or both? It goes on both sides, right. So if this is what I had going into it, I've got to add four hydroxides to both sides. Right. And now we can do some reduction. This and this make how many waters? When I combine this with this, I get 4H2O, right? I've got 2H2O here, so I can go ahead and reduce that out now. Or you can wait until the very end and reduce it out there. It doesn't really matter when you do it. It's going to work out the same either way. So if we go ahead and reduce this, this subtracts from this. 
gives me coefficient of two here. And now I've got a balanced half reaction. Do we agree? Any questions on how we got any of these coefficients? So now we're ready to multiply. Right, I've got a coefficient of three and a coefficient of two. Again, this is where those little tiny goofy mistakes can really, really come back to haunt you. Because if you had accidentally put a one right here, that make a humongous difference, right? That make a humongous difference. So three is not a multiple of two, so I have to multiply them both by each other, right, to get their least common multiple. Multiplying this one by two, multiplying this one by three, and then I'm gonna add, and then I'm gonna reduce as much as I can, right? Because I've got some H2Os to reduce, I've got some hydroxides to reduce, and then obviously I've gotta get rid of my electrons, so the electrons go away. I've got six hydroxides here and eight hydroxides here, so what do I do? I just subtract this from this, so this new coefficient becomes two. And I've got some waters to subtract, right? Three on this side, four on this side, so I'm just subtracting these from this, giving me my final answer. Again, order doesn't matter. Whatever order you wanna write these in makes no difference so long as the correct coefficients are present and you've got the correct thing on the correct side of the equation. Questions on how we did this one? Questions, questions. So I will be posting enrichment problems and solutions to those enrichment problems. Obviously that's up to you if you want to do the enrichment or if you don't. Uh, it's not worth points. But if you would like the additional practice, it'll be available. Otherwise, I'll see you tomorrow.